Hey there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can draw electron configuration of atoms. Now, last lesson, when we looked at the atom itself, we did cover a little bit about how electrons are arranged. We're going to be looking at it in much more detail in this lesson. So, we've got our oxygen from last lesson, and we need to understand in more detail how electrons are arranged. So, a reminder, electrons orbit the nucleus of an atom. The electrons orbit in shells. So we can see here that oxygen has two electron shells. And it's really important to note that the period that an atom is in in the periodic table tells us how many electron shells that atom has. So hydrogen and helium are in period one. They have one electron shell. Oxygen, we can see here, is in period two, so has two electron shells. Sodium is in period three, so has three electron shells. Potassium is in period four, so has four electron shells, and so on. So the period that an atom is in tells us how many electron shells there are. What's also really important is the group number tells us how many electrons are found in the outer shell. So, an element in group 1 will have one electron in its outer shell. An element in group 2 will have two electrons in its outer shell. Oxygen, we can see, has six electrons in its outer shell, so we say that it is in group 6. Now, it's worth pointing out as well that sometimes these electrons in the outer shell are known as valence electrons. So, if you hear that term, valence electrons, it just means electrons in the outer shell. Now, there's one slight exception to this rule where the group number is equal to the number of electrons in the outer shell. And this is when we look at the very last group, group zero. Now, group zero or group eight would imply that there are eight electrons in the outer shell. Helium is an exception and there are only two electrons in the outer shell of helium and we'll explain why later on. The first electron shell contains a maximum of two electrons. It cannot contain any more than two. It can contain one electron and it is possible to contain no electrons in a specific example, but there can be no more than two electrons in the first electron shell. And this is why helium only has two electrons in its outer shell because helium only has one electron shell so it can only contain a maximum of two electrons in this shell. Of course, it's also true that helium has two protons, so we'll also have two electrons as well. All other shells contain a maximum of eight electrons. So it's impossible to have more than eight electrons in any one electron shell. And all of the electron shells must be completely full except for the outer shell. So only the outer shell is allowed to have any empty spaces in it. So the first shell has a maximum of two electrons. If there is a second electron shell, then the first shell must be complete. The second shell can contain a maximum of eight electrons. If there is a third electron shell, then the second shell must be complete and so on. We're going to look at the example of magnesium and we're going to see how we can draw the electron configuration for magnesium. Now, all the information that we need is contained in the symbol that we would find in the periodic table. So we can see that magnesium has an atomic number of 12. This means that there are 12 protons, but of course there must also be 12 electrons. So we draw the nucleus and we can simply do this by writing mg. We do not need to draw all of the protons or neutrons. That's not important. What we're interested in are the electrons. So we can also look at our periodic table and see that magnesium is found in period three of the periodic table. Now, if it is found in period three of the periodic table, we automatically know there must be three electron shells. So the first thing that we can do is we can draw those three electron shells on. It could be that you don't want to look up the periodic table and you can see all the information in the symbol here. You can also work out that there are three electron shells by remembering that the first electron shell contains two, the second shell a maximum of eight, that gives us 10 and there are 12 in total. So of course there must be a third shell. We also know that magnesium is in group two of the periodic table. If magnesium is in group two of the periodic table, 
there must be two electrons in the outer shell. Now I've put those at opposite ends of that shell. So we've completed the outer shell first. We know that all the other electron shells must be full. So we're going to put two electrons in the first shell and we're going to put eight electrons in the second shell. If you look at the second shell, you'll notice that I've paired up the electrons. This is just for clarity. It makes it much easier to immediately see that there are eight electrons if they're paired up. The final thing that we need to do is we need to draw what we call our electron configuration. Now the electron configuration is just going to tell us how many electrons are in each shell. So what we do when we draw the electron configuration is we open some brackets, we write two because there are two electrons in the first shell. We write eight because there are eight electrons in the second shell. And we write two again because there are two electrons in the final shell. We then close off our brackets and we can see that we have an electron configuration of two, eight, two. Now no other element will have an electron configuration of two, eight, two, only magnesium. So just to clarify, we can see here the first electron shell has a maximum of two electrons when full. All of the other shells have a maximum of eight electrons and they must be full with the exception of the outer shell. The outer shell contains our valence electrons. The number of electrons in our outer shell is always going to be equal to the group number. And of course, finally, we've got our electron configuration. So the total number of electrons has to be equal to the atomic number. So 282, 2 plus 8 plus 2 is 12. That's the same as the atomic number. We know that we've done this correctly. If we take a look at another example, argon, very quickly, we draw AR. We then see that again, argon is found in period three of the periodic table, which means it has three electron shells. So the first thing we can do is we can draw our electron shells that are empty. Argon is in group zero of the periodic table, which means that its outer electron shell must be full. So we can draw eight electrons. So elements in group zero always have their outer shell completely full. So two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second, eight in the third. Our electron configuration is two, eight, eight. If we add these up, we can see that makes 18, which is equal to our atomic number. So argon has been drawn correctly. It's worth pointing out that if an element has a full outer shell, it is going to be completely stable and unreactive. So elements in group zero do not react with other elements. Now, it's worth pointing out that elements with atomic numbers greater than 20, so scandium and larger, are more complicated. They can have up to 18 electrons in any one shell, with the exception of the outer shell, which will have eight, but you only at this point need to know how to draw elements up to calcium, so atomic number 20. In summary, electrons are arranged into shells that orbit the nucleus. The number of electron shells is equal to the period number. The number of electrons in the outer shell, the valence electrons, is equal to the group number. Remember, group zero always has a full outer shell. The number of valence electrons dictates how an element will react. If something is in group zero, it won't react at all. Other groups all have patterns in their reactivity. Elements in group zero have a full outer shell, so are stable and unreactive. The first electron shell has a maximum of two electrons. All other shells have a maximum of eight electrons. And elements larger than calcium have a more complicated electron configuration. So I hope you understand the basics of electron configuration. I hope you can draw electron configuration now. Have a go at the worksheets and make sure you understand it. Make sure you can do it. Until next lesson, keep on learning.